Hi, and welcome to this next video in the series on coordinate geometry. In this one, I'm going to have a look at straight lines in the context of modeling. Because, like I said, on the A level courses we have now, there's a lot more emphasis on how we can actually use the mathematics that we're learning about in practical uh, contextual situations. So, we're looking to model real life uh, situations uh, using linear graphs and then have a, a little think about what the numbers in these equations actually mean in the context that we're talking about. So, here we go. So, Mathematical models are built to help us understand the world around us, so like economics, physics, biology. It's about being able to describe something mathematically and then use it to make predictions or to gain some idea about what's going on in any given situation. We're going to have a look at a couple of real simple ones um, in this video. And the other thing just to mention very quickly is we might get something that's couched in terms of direct proportion. Um, so direct proportion from your GCSE, well, as one uh, variable increases, the other one increases by a fixed amount. So we've got that. Two quantities in direct proportion when they increase at the same rate. And the key thing here is that we'll say that they are directly proportional if they're in straight lines, first of all. And secondly, if they're directly proportional, they need to go through the origin, i.e. Um, a zero amount of one variable means we've got a zero amount of another variable. And some linear models will be directly proportional if they go through the origin, but some won't be because they will have a y-intercept. So there we go. So we've got one that's directly proportional. There it is. You can see it's a straight line. It's going through the origin. Um, and we've got the electric current in amps. Uh, it's directly proportional to the voltage. So calculate the gradient of the line. Straightforward stuff. So gradient, change in y over change in x. There we go. So let's just pick a couple of points on the line. Um, and there we go. We've got a gradient 10 over 6, which cancels down to the 5 over 3. Write an equation linking the two things. So we've just got a straight line with the gradient 5 over 3. So very straightforward. We've just got i equals 5 over 3v. And then what the value of k means in this particular context. And here comes a standard phrase that you're going to use, um, which is essentially linked to for every additional one unit of your variable across the bottom axis, in this case volts, means an increase of 5 thirds um, in terms of the amps. So it's that idea of every one additional unit of the x variable translates to an increase in however many units of the y variable, in this case, the grain of the line being five thirds. Right, hopefully you're reasonably happy with that. Well, let's just shuffle swiftly on. So here we've got a model that's linear, but not directly proportional, but it will be linear if you can get all the points in a straight line. So what we've got here is some information about the cost of journeys uh, for a taxi firm. So first things first, is a linear model appropriate? Well, we could start off by looking at the differences between the values, but you'll notice here, we've got an increase of one unit here, but an increase of three here. So you're gonna get the differences there are gonna be slightly different. So the easiest thing to do here, I think, is just to plot some points and have a look at what's going on. Again, in the exam, if they expect you to do this by plotting, then let's say they will give you a graph to plot it on. Or if not, you'll be able to just do it numerically from a table, depending on the information they give you. Bang the points in. There they are. You can just about see my red dots. Draw a line through. There we go. We've got a straight line. So we can say, yes, the points are in a straight line. So a linear model is appropriate in this situation. Next part of the question. Um, form an equation in the form P equals the price equals A times the distance plus B. So A being our gradient and B being the intercept. So let's just, we've got all the points in the straight lines. So let's just pick some points on the table and do some calculating based on that. So if we go for those two, probably the simplest to use, change in Y over change in X. So we've got a gradient of 1.25. So we're at that point there. And now let's just pick another point. Let's go for the point 37.55. And again, just bang those values into our, uh, our model. So P is the uh, 7.55 and D is the three mile journey. In they go. And then, so that gives a value of B, which is 3.8. So it says form an equation. So the last thing you've got to do, remember you've done your calculation, but please remember to write out your equation as a complete equation, um, even if you calculate your values, because that's what the last mark will be for. Right, so we've got the price is 1.25 D plus 3.80. So on we go to part C. So we've got to interpret the meaning of the coefficients A and B. So what do our values of 1.25 and 3.80 mean in this context? 
And again, the 1.25, that's our gradient. So it's what we're saying is for every one uh, mile increase in distance traveled is going to translate to a £1.25 uh, increase in the price. So A represents basically a cost of 1.25 per mile. And for the, uh, for the B, which is the 3.8, so that one there. So if we've got a journey of zero miles, here it is on our graph, we're still going to get charged £3.80. So that is a fixed charge, and that is irrespective of how far the journey is. So that's part C. Final thing, part D, why might a linear model not be appropriate in this context? So this is where you've got to think specifically about the, the context that you're in. And the first thing that springs to mind for me on this one is you wouldn't necessarily have a smooth straight line. Because if, for example, you had a journey of three and a half miles, the next point at which the fare increase will, will happen will be actually when you hit four miles rather it's, it's going up in like kind of bits at a time if you ever watched the, the meter on a taxi it's not just a constant change of units so in this particular case i'll suggest the firm might not charge for parts per mile so a stepped model might be more appropriate what i mean by that is we might end up with something that looks more like that so we've got in between let's let's pick a point so let's say in between four and five miles we've got a charge of just uh, what's that just less than nine pounds but it's not going to jump to the next bit up that one pound 25 isn't going to go onto the cost until you actually get to the five mile mark so that's just about having a think about the particular situation you're in and coming up with whatever appears to be sensible so there we go modeling with linear lines done and sorted